And we are back for another episode of Andrew Plays. As always, I am Andrew Ambrose, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful Saturday, because I sure am. Well, today's game is another Mario game that you probably never even heard of. And it's another one that was done from the collaboration between Hudson Soft and Nintendo. This one is Punchball Mario Brothers. Now, Punchball Mario Brothers um, is a very interesting game, because, like, la last time we saw Mario Brothers Special, which took the classic um, Mario Brothers arcade game, took some elements from it, but made something completely brand new. But with this new this uh, Punchball game, uh, it's basically just a re it's just the original Mario Brothers. However, with a twist, rather than attacking the enemies from uh, stunning the enemies from underneath and then knocking them off like you did in the original, you toss a giant ball at them called the Punch Ball that will stun them, and then you can proceed to knock them off. But otherwise, it's pretty much the same game. It's just that. Um, the layout of the stage is different, and not only that, but you can't, you have to be, uh, running in order to jump. If you're stationary and you hit the button, you'll throw the punch ball, and if you're running and you hit the button, you won't throw it, you'll just jump. So, yeah, it's, it's weird, but it, it, it works. And, uh... That's uh, pretty much it. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's get this going, shall we? I have my NES controller with the USB um, adapter, so I can use it on my computer. Because what better way to play a classic Nintendo game than with a classic Nintendo controller? Let's get started, boys and girls. So uh. Pretty much the same as before. S same ordeal. But yeah, got the punch ball. I'm gonna take out this shell creeper. There we go. And uh, and unlike OG Mario Brothers, the coin doesn't come out of the pipe when you kill the enemy. You, it just appears on that top platform and you just collect it like that. It's pretty simple, but it works. And we got the good old pow block to help us out. Also, that uh, pipe on the bottom of the screen, you actually you can actually die if you... You can actually accidentally fall into that pipe and die, so be careful. But it's like, you can't go in any of the pipes in the original Mario Brothers, unlike the uh, Super Mario Brothers, but in the, in the original Mario Brothers, you couldn't go in any of the pipes. But in this game, you can go in p the pipes... At least the bottom one, but that one is the one that kills you, which is very ironic. So anyway, we're here on phase two. Take out the shell creepers, or at least stun them with the bunch ball, and then uh, uh, knock them off by touching them, or really kicking them. But you, ju you just run into them, take them out. That's pretty much it. Alright, throw that one. And if you throw the punch ball down into that pipe, it just appears above the pow block. Bloach. Hey Mario, it's a question bloach. Yeah, if you guys have you ever guys have you guys ever seen that uh that uh Mario video that iDubs and Filthy Frank did a few years ago? That that was hilarious. It's like, iDubs was Luigi, and Fra Filthy Frank was, uh, Mario. And they were like, it was it was hilarious. And, like, Max Mofo was Peach, and Anything for Views was Donkey Kong. But yeah, that, that video was hilarious. <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Like, so iDubs was, like, saying, Hey, Mario, it's a question bloach! It's, it's just hilarious. Hmm. Oh, this little son of a bitch. Ah, oh, 
Dang it, I missed. Oop. Oop. Oh. Oh, we gotta... I'll get him. Here, I just gotta position myself. Son of a bitch. There we go. You don't screw with me, guys. Ah! The bonus stage. It's actually kind of easy. You just need to get all the coins as they go up and down. There we go. <laughs> yeah, the music in this... Uh, the music in this game is actually really good, just like with Mario Brothers Special. They did. A, Hudson did a fantastic job with how they handled these Nintendo games for such primitive hardware. I mean, I love the Sharp X one, but I admit it's not as good as other com as other uh, systems and computers like the MSX or the Famicom Family Computer or Sega Master System. Those those were much more powerful and could do a lot more if you knew what you were doing. And unfortunately, some companies didn't know what they were doing. Others did, but there were some that didn't. Like, if you lived in Europe and you had an MSX, you were mostly subject... Unless you had a lot of Konami games, you were usually subjected to a bunch of crappy ports of ZX Spectrum games. And as we all know, it's never a good... It's usually never a good idea to take a game from a inferior platform and put it on a higher system is just going to be crap and you're just a lazy bastard honestly if you're just going to do that it's sickening cuz the MSX that can actually do better than a ZX Spectrum but no they just subject it to something less i mean i like the ZX Spectrum so it's it's pretty cool but it's not as powerful as MSX and you can't just be so lazy as to just take a, Z a, a specky game and put it on MSX. It's not that simple, you guys. But... But, well, at least we can now just play MSX games on emulators. A actual good MSX games, at least. It kind of sucks that the United States didn't get the MSX, at least not that I know of. I mean, we got the ColecoVision, and there was the Spectra video, but there was no MS, there were no MSX computers in America, as far as I know. Only in Japan and Europe, and also Brazil, I think. Oh well, I don't think I've seen this before. the the plat the the platforms are moving. That's that's gonna be an all new challenge. That's right. <laughs> Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Oh! Oh, damn, that was that's a dirty move. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna get that coin. I'm just gonna play it safe and just kill the enemies. <laughs> yeah, take that. Oh, oh there we go. Yeah, it was doing a weird thing there. <laughs> Alright, get that coin. Say, you guys heard that... You, you, got, you guys know about... Like... Do you, you guys know about uh, Dragon Ball Z? Like, the, the Filipino English dub of Dragon Ball Z? Like... You see, like, in the Philippines, see, English is, like, a, a secondary language, I think. So shows that came there they were either dubbed into tagalog or taglog i think or or english and well dragon ball z actually had an english dub in uh, the philippines long before there was an english dub here in the united states which is pretty amazing as a matter of fact like like they dubbed like the dub is mostly lost but they uh they really, they, uh, but, except for, like, the dub that they made of Dragon Ball Z movies 5 and 6, which were actually combined together into one movie as Dragon Ball Z The Greatest Rivals, which definitely makes sense since both movies have to do with, uh, 
uh, Frieza's brother Kula, and we'll, uh, since, well, since each movie individually is only about, like, 40 to 50 minutes long, or something, or, like, 40 to, yeah, 40 to 50, 50, 40 to 45 minutes long, like, it'd be kind of short as their own individual movies, so it makes sense to combine them as one movie, in that sense, and well, like, the, when they, the dub of that, those movies, it was released in theaters in 1996, and it also got a very limited VHS run in the Philippines, and well, it's act, that dub, that, the movie dub has actually been lost for years until recently when, uh, um, like, someone, like, donated, I think, uh, someone donated one of the tapes to, uh, Fumecom, very, very talented man, Fumecom, he's just, he's super awesome. And, uh, well, Fumecom, he, uh, actually recorded, he, uh, he was actually recorded all of the dub onto, he actually was able to record all the dub onto a tape, um, into a video file, and in that, he's now made it available for everyone to watch on archive.org. And not only, but not only does he have, he, not only did he make a VHS rip of it, but he even also put up a remaster of it so that, it has the footage from the Japanese Blu-ray release of the movies so that it looks better and more accurate so, or something like that so yeah shout out to Fumecom he's a really cool guy and you should support his work as an archivist he does a lot of cool stuff stuff I like that word. Stuff. <laughs> I'm probably just rambling on, but hey, it's, it's fun to talk about random things like this. It's kind of the, kind of the point of this uh, series, on, <laughs> to be honest. It's just so I can relax and talk to you guys about things that are on my mind while playing some rare and obscure video, uh, video games and computer games. Like this one right here. I'm actually doing really good in this right now. I'm just owning this right now. I don't mean to sound... I don't mean to sound... Like one of those... Oh! Alright. Well, uh... I guess, uh... I guess that should do it. I did pretty good. Um, so yeah, that was Punchball Mario Brothers. Pretty fun, and well, definitely recommended for any Mario fans out there looking for something, something, uh, different from what they're used to, but still very fun. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Andrew Plays, and hopefully, um, I'll be back for more, uh, fun stuff in the future, so, I hope you guys are having a... A fantastic Saturday, and remember, wash your hands, and eat your damn vegetables! This is Andrew Ambrose, and as always, I'll catch you later.